Okay. So, what would an example of a polymer be? Some of the things we talked about yesterday. Say that again. Okay, plastic, which is polyethylene. So, when we take the compound C2, okay, so we know that it's two carbons long because the prefix is ETH, okay. So, what does ENE -E mean as far as a suffix? What organic family is that? It's an alkene, and if it is polyethylene, what does that mean that unit does? Well, well, that's what ethene means, but when you put the prefix poly in front of that, how many sides does a polygon have? How many? I'd say more than three. Yeah, because obviously one's a point, two is a line, three would be a triangle, and then anything beyond that you could say is a polygon. You don't know how many sides a polygon would possibly have. So a polymer then means how many units do you have? That's a repeating unit. That's what a polymer is. And besides ethylene, what was an example of a biological compound we gave as a polymer? Does anyone remember? We drew them up on the board. How does the, the gum has flavoring, but it also has what in it besides the flavor that you chew it because it tastes what? Yes, because it has sugar in there. So glucose is a monomer or monosaccharide, but when you start linking a whole bunch of monosaccharides together, you get a what? Which is a polysaccharide. That's right. Okay. So this leads into different types of compounds known as biological types. Okay. And proteins are one of them. Lipids would be a second. Carbohydrates or sugars would be a third. And the fourth one would be what we call nucleic acids. Have you ever heard of the term amino acid before? Okay. So, and probably not everybody. Everyone enjoys basketball. Not everyone enjoys track. Not everyone enjoys. Everyone loves music, but we not participating in music. So not science isn't for everybody, but we just try to make the best of it. So what what do you think? I wouldn't expect you to know. Well, let me. I'll let you catch up. So what makes life possible in our daily routines, what is it that you constantly have to have? And there's more than one answer to that. Throughout the course of a day, what do you continually need to have? Okay, oxygen's one. Water is the second one. And what else might you have to have? Yeah, nutrients. Okay, which... Protein, you could say, is a type of nutrient. That's right. Okay. So you could say that especially the oxygen and the water and those nutrients are essential for you to, to stay alive. Okay. We sometimes 
have uh, addressed something called the rule of threes. For three, you're pushing your life's viability to continue. After three minutes, if you run out of this, you could suffer brain damage. Oxygen, okay? And three days without this substance, you could be in trouble. Water. And then three months, finally, you're really pushing it for what? For food. Three minutes, three days, three months. Now, is that accurate for everybody? No. But in general, it's a, it's a, a, a pretty good rule of thumb, just like uh, for those of you who may go through a calving season or if you have uh, sows that are going to give pigs or, or even horses, okay, is every cow or every sow going to give birth at the same time? The answer, of course, is no. Okay, so a good rule of thumb or a good idea is that how many months do you think it is for a cow? It's about nine months. Same for that of humans and, and cows. Pigs, it's a little different. About a third of that time. And the reason we say that is it's about, oh, I would say th almost four months. Three weeks, or no, three months and Three weeks and then three days. Kind of like a, a rule of threes again. So in general, that's what it would be like. So when it comes to amino acids, okay, if you have break them up into two, essential amino acids and non-essential, okay, which one can you get by without? In other words, you get it from the food that you take in. And that would be your non-essential. means your body can metabolize that. Your body can make them non-essentials. Your liver takes care of that for you. But essential amino acids means you have to take them in from, from your diet. Okay? So what happens is when you start linking these amino acids together, as you can see, they can get to be quite complex. And the reason we say that is, okay, how many letters are in the alphabet 26 okay so then how many of course there's quite a few words you can formulate with those 26 letters correct and not everyone's vocabulary would be the same and we wouldn't expect everyone's vocabulary to be the same but based off of those 26 letters. This is uh, Webster's American Dictionary, college edition. And the definition stop at the letter Z on page 917. So I don't know how many words you could say are in here, but obviously quite a bit. Okay. Almost a thousand pages of words and definitions. Okay. So. It's no stretch of the imagination to where if you have 20 different amino acids that a lot of proteins can be made from those amino acids. And what that means, okay, some of you will be going on to possibly take a course, whether it's in college or whether you go further into high school, some of this you will recognize, okay. So the simplest amino acid, now you don't need to write this down, okay? Is this guy right here, it's called glycine, okay? So the reason we call that an amino acid is on the left side, you have what's called an amino group. It's got this nitrogen in here, okay? So this is an amino group. So how do we get the idea that's called an amino acid? This is the amino portion. What's this over here then? It's an acid. How did you know that? You're right. 
because it has COOH. Okay? So, what are we referring to here? Same idea, that is what? Which acid? It's ethanoic acid. Okay? Now, if you are having problems recognizing these, please get in and talk to myself or find someone to talk to before tomorrow. I mean, that, that is your personal choice. So, here we have that COOH means acid. And if we take this off, okay, this is getting closer to resemble what? Put a couple single bonds in there. That's an alcohol. You are correct. How did you know that? Yes, it only has an OH on there. Okay, so it goes methanol, ethanol, propanol. What comes after that? Butanol, pentanol, and the pattern just keeps repeating 1 through 10. All right, so when you start linking these amino acids together, you start to formulate protein. All right. So, moving on then. So, if proteins are only 15% of, of your body's weight, that's essentially true. Where's the rest of it? No. We're a lot of water inside of us. Okay, so that's where the majority of your weight comes from. That and muscle tissue, and muscle is composed of proteins. All right. Is that just one slide? No, okay. referred to as cold case files in, in Sioux Falls that have been solved recently. What Does anyone know what it means to refer to a case as a cold case? means true. Yeah, I'd say that's a good way of looking at it. It's, it's unsolved. Okay. And with that, I, I believe it was called Baby John Doe. And this was on Kelloland News last week or two weeks ago, in 1980, I believe that was the year, way before, you ladies and gentlemen, but what had happened is on the southeast side of Sioux Falls, an infant was found just, just in the ditch, wrapped up in a towel, and uh, just left there, and left there to, and, and it was maybe placed there. Uh, Dad, we, we really don't know the full story, but evidence then was sealed I suppose put into plastic bags I don't know if it goes into a box for storage or goes into a locker but how is it that that couldn't have been solved that long ago but now we have the capability to solve it almost 40 years later the technology wasn't there but the, does the DNA disappear the answer is no Okay, so I would be led to believe that when that evidence was sealed in a vacuum packed bag that doesn't allow air to interact with any of the tissue in there, it won't decompose. That, that's what I would believe. Now, is that t entirely accurate? I, I would be led to believe so. So then maybe some form of tip had, had led the police to... To, I suppose get a warrant for this uh, a tissue sample from this lady and through the process of DNA fingerprint, well not fingerprinting but when I say 
fingerprinting, comparing her DNA to what was found at the scene almost 40 years ago, was able to determine this individual is the mother of this infant. And it is with very, I want to say certain, uh, I don't know if it gives a percentage on there, but the certainty is, is almost 99.9% .9 accurate. So is, does that leave any doubt? Well, I, I suppose a defense lawyer can say, well, there's a little bit of shred of doubt. But again, that, now you're getting into the, uh, the, the, not the loss, what's the word I'm looking for? Not criminal side, but uh, whether it's judicial side or, or whatever. I don't know much about that, but the science behind it is actually uh, fairly accurate. Okay. So in case you ever wondered why we say DNA all the time, you'd maybe heard of it, but rather than writing this out every time, that's why you say DNA instead of deoxyribonucleic acid. Probably hard to remember how to spell every time as well. this we just have one more now all organs of course are important for the human body from a kidney to of course a pancreas to a liver and all of them are would be very difficult to live without a proper functioning one but possibly the liver you can maybe tell by looking at a person if they have a a faulty liver because they may have a shade of what color yeah, they actually have a shade of yellow color to them. And, uh, that's a proper, uh, the term for that is jaundice. And what happens is your liver is responsible for making, remember, a lot of the essential amino acids we said you, you need to take in from your diet. A lot of the non-essential amino acids, your liver can actually manipulate them to create the proteins that you need. And remember, proteins are building blocks of amino acids, okay? And those proteins also account for enzymes, and it controls those cellular activities. And that's why, of course, not that you're saying that any one of those organs is more important than another, but it's trying to live without a, a liver. It's a proper functioning liver is very, very difficult. All right, and then finally, carbohydrates. Everyone's probably favorite a uh, molecule because it includes sugars, okay? Sugars and starches. And for dinner today, you've got super nachos. Is that right? Okay. Does everyone have this information that wants it? Okay, and maybe there wasn't a whole lot to write with that. Anyway. Okay. So, the ones, uh, the multiple choice questions? Yes. All right, go ahead and.
what do you feel you would like to ask as far as anything in this chapter? Isomers, acids, alcohols, derivatives, parent chains, branch chains. All the above. How many different derivatives are there? What are they? Methyl's a derivative. Ethyl and column seven are what? Halogens. Halogen derivatives as well. Okay. Now again, a derivative is different than an organic family. Okay. So Okay, first thing you're going to do is what? And your parent chain is what? Okay, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's not the longest continuous chain. So, yes, it is heptane. And why is the suffix A N E? It's saturated, they're all bonded in a single bond. So we know we can say we've got heptane, okay? Is there anything branching off of that heptane? Okay, there's three different derivatives on there. We got a methyl group here. This is a what? This is an ethyl group. And then what is this here? It's a halogen derivative or a chloral group. Okay? So the reason we put them letters there is now you know you need to have three numbers on there. And now we can put them in alphabetical order. Okay? So with that, okay, what's our first number? So we going right to left or left to right? Okay. So one, two, three. You're thinking the opposite, right to left. Okay, that sounds better. And they're, they're even in alphabetical order for you already. Anyway, so on the second carbon, what do we have? Two dash chloro. Okay, what's our next one? Okay. Okay. All right. So, what about if we put that up top? got to change the name just a little bit two comma two all right because there's two of them there's one below and there's one above so two comma two dichloro okay and if there's another chloral group on there then you call it trichloro we see that pattern okay so they want to have this step Okay, otherwise you can go back to the video should you feel you need to see it. Okay. Draw the or name the simplest alkene. One carbon, right? Okay, well. 
what's that? That's the simplest hydrocarbon. That's methane. But we said draw the simplest alkene. So, well, let's put a double bond on there. Shouldn't that be alkene? Why are you saying no? No is correct. Right. You can't just base this off of having just one carbon, okay? So therefore, this is the simplest alkene. What's the prefix? Well, it's got two carbons, so we know the prefix is ETH. What's this telling you? It's an alkene. Again, organic family, two carbons. They are. And make sure each one has four bonds. That's why there's only two hydrogens on those two carbons. Okay, so okay, so what do we have right now? Okay, we got to account for this, and if there's an OH on there, we refer to that as what type of organic family? It's an alcohol, okay? And it's got four carbons, the parent chain then, the prefix is what? Okay, again, organic family, four carbons. If you really, really want to be specific, you could do this. Okay, so what could a derivative, or not derivative, an isomer of one butanol be? Two butanol. So what are we going to do? We're still going to draw four carbons. But when you say two butanol, what do you say is moving? Yes. Instead of being on the first one, put them on the second one. Okay? So, could we make another isomer by moving the OH group? No, not for this level. And we're, we would just say there's only one isomer occurring for this. Um, if you really, really wanted to be picky, um, you could move it down to a, a, a propanol group. but. We just want to know that 2-butanol is different than butanol because you're moving the OH group, okay? Okay. If you see 2-hexene, there's nothing written after that 2, but it's got to be some sort of significance or else we wouldn't put it there. So, what is our organic family? It's an alkene, so what does that tell you? There's a double bond somewhere in that parent chain. What's this telling you? And that's how many? Okay. Okay, so what else would we do? Okay. How's that? Is that correct? It's not correct. Why not? Okay, remember carbon can only have four bonds. This guy out a little bit. This one's got five, so does this one. So, what we would do, take this one off and that one. Now, is that right? Okay. 
what would the simplest way to make an isomer of 2-hexene? I, I still don't have it written correctly. Do I? I just caught it. No one else did. Now we've got hexene. Okay. Okay. Now you've got two hexene. Simplest thing, you go three hexene, you go hexene. Okay. There's there's more isomers for alkenes than there are alkanes just because of moving that double bond. All right. Okay. Name the simplest acid. Okay, so we know, okay, what does it mean to be an acid? No, double bonded oxygen, there it is. Single bonded OH. So we've got three bonds so far, so there must be another one. Okay? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Okay? So the organic family, we said, is an acid. We know that's correct because we've got what? C-O-O-H. Okay? How many carbons? Just one. So what is the prefix for one carbon? Okay? Okay? So we've got methane, and how do we state that it's an acid? Oops, methane, oic acid. Okay. So now we've got what? Butanoic acid, because it has how many carbons? Four. It's no different than saying butanol, or excuse me, butane, okay, because it still has four carbons. All right, and finally, Okay, what would that be telling you to do? Okay, we know it's a shape. Why? Because it has cyclo on it. Okay, so what's our organic family? So somewhere on that ring structure, because you correctly said that means ring structure, which it does, okay, so how many sides does this structure have? Okay. Okay. So we can safely put these bonds in there. And where do you want the OH? It will be difficult to put it inside. Okay. That would be cyclopropanol. That's right. All right. Middle, are we good? Right outside. Okay, left outside. Left middle, right middle. All right, is there anything else you would like to ask? Going once, going twice. Get in on that auction, sold. All right, so be ready to go tomorrow. Okay, we'll catch up to you next time.